Today, May 24th, is International Women's Day for Peace and Disarmament, which honors the work of anti-military women activists. I carry with me their legacy and the legacy of radical women writers past and present. I turn to their words when I felt lost, and I believe that we can look to them for wisdom as we gather as a community to heal and make our voices heard. I believe it's crucial that young women and young people in general get involved with this work because as someone who's only been to Korea once that I can remember, I've always been searching for ways to connect with the peninsula, and all of those connections have centrally been through my mother, who fed me Korean food or talked to me in the Korean language. And historically, in Korea's revolutionary history, the Korean women have been the people to uphold that culture and sustain it through times of great turmoil. Right now, we're in a very tumultuous time between U.S.-China relations, and if war were to ever break out, Korea would be on the front lines. So we, as a collective, need to protect our brethren, just like a mother would protect their own children. The people that I'm bringing with me to D.C. are the spirits of the revolutionaries who have laid the groundwork for us all, starting from the Tonak Rebellion in the 1800s to the anti-imperialist and anti-war women of the world who formed the International Women's Day for Peace and Disarmament in the 1980s. I know that I'm not alone in the struggle and find strength in their camaraderie and bravery. I believe that I am here today because of the sheer will to survive by the strong Korean women in my family, from ancestors to present day. They survived everything from colonization to the brutal proxy war between the US, the Soviet Union, and China, and America's continued neo-colonial military occupation of the peninsula. I think that this is the, the least I can do to honor their lives and work towards a unified Korea that my own descendants can visit one day.